better. Slide two. First, greet you all in the name of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. And thank God for this, another opportunity to come together to praise, glorify God, seeking his forgiveness and repenting to him. He is the forgiver, most merciful. So we turn to our Lord, seeking his forgiveness. We know that this is our last chance mm -hmm. to come and to strive to redeem our souls. We thank God for every opportunity It is always an honor and a privilege to come to this community and to share with you, and to, uh, preach to you, and remind you of the things that God has inspired me. And we all have this inspiration, those of us who are sincere. There's not anything special. What is special is this Quran, this revelation. That is what is special. And today, I would like to look at what God says in the scripture when he informs us. God says that That he did not create the heavens and the earth, but for a specific purpose. And he tells us this throughout the Quran. I did not create the heavens and the earth, but for a specific purpose. And he mentions this in the Quran, as I said, uh, over 15 times he, he, he tells us this. And it is something that we have to adhere to. In other words, we should understand what it is that God is, is saying to us. And he tells us in Surah uh, al hijra he says, we did not create Surah uh, Surah 15 he says, We did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them except for a specific purpose. And then he tells us, he says, The end of the world is coming, so treat them with benign neglect. So he's telling us that he did not create the heavens and the earth but for a specific purpose. But then he says, Whatever the purpose is, it's going to end. He said it's going to end. He said the end of the, of the world is near. That's what, he's, that's what he's saying to us. And then, uh, so al Noel, he says, he tells us the same thing. He says, In our law, Ayah 3, he says, He created the heavens and the earth for a specific purpose. He is much too high, far above any idols that they set up. So again, he tells us that He created the heavens and the earth for a purpose, but there should be no idolatry. And then he tells us he says he has committed the sea to serve you. He says he has placed stabilizers as mountains to protect you. He has committed in your service the night and the day and the sun and the moon and the stars are committed by his command but 
he's not telling us the specific purpose of why he created it. One of the reasons that, one of the things that he, one of the reasons he didn't create the heavens and the earth, we're going to look at that. And he says in Surah 21, he says, in Surah al anbiya he says, He did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them just for amusement. So we know he didn't create it for amusement. He said if we needed amusement, we could have initiated it without any of this. But this is what we wanted to do. So then he tells us why he created the heavens and the earth. He said, instead, it is our plan to support the truth against falsehood in order to defeat it. Woe to you for the utterances you utter. So God has created the heavens and the earth to extract a certain plan. We're here based upon a plan, a scheme of God. Okay? It's another way of looking at it. We have to look at it as many ways as we possibly can. It's what he says. And then he tells us, he says, what? He says, woe to you for the utterances you utter. That's the last statement that he made. Why does he say that? Well, God is telling us that his plan is to defeat falsehood. And so, we have to make sure that we have decided whose side we're going to be on, that we're not uttering falsehood. Because if we do, God is against us. That's why this is so important. That's why he says it. And one of the examples that he gives, he says, the Jews even said God's hand is tied down. It is their hands that are tied down. They are condemned for uttering such a blasphemy. Instead, his hands are wide open, spending as he wills. For certain, your Lord's revelations to you will cause many of them to plunge deeper into transgression and disbelief. Consequently, we have committed them to animosity and hatred among themselves until the day of resurrection. Whenever they ignite a flame of war, God puts them out. They roam the earth wickedly, and God dislikes their evil doings. So, when at the end of this ayat, when he tells you, woe to you for the utterances you utter, you have to be careful. And he tells us in the scripture, he says, if only the rabbis and the priests enjoy them for them from their sinful utterances and illicit earnings, miserable indeed is what they commit. So God did not create the heavens and the earth but for a specific purpose. And again, that purpose is his plan to support the truth against falsehood in order to defeat it. Okay? That's the plan. And we have decided to, when we embrace the Most High, 
that we're going to be servants of his, we're serving the truth. And those who have not chose, chosen God, they are serving falsehood. And so again, we have to make sure we're uttering truth and not falsehood. Because this is the plan. Now, we all want to be on the side of God. Because God tells us in the scripture, I mean, he tells us in purgatory, he says, my scheming is for middle. So who do you think is going to win? God, I would think. But there are those who don't believe that. But we can look at, into the scripture and we can see God's strategy. How he works his plan. And we have to know that you just can't defeat God. First of all, God controls the lifespan. So, if you ever think about, you know, going up against God, you got to know that these are these are the, the the qualities of God. He knows the future. He knows what everybody's doing. That's what He tells you in the scripture. Okay. He says, no two people can scheme without him being the third. What are you going to do with that? It's, it, it's almost inevitable. It is inevitable that God will win. God says, I and my messengers will inevitably win. It's done. It's actually done. Because the, the plan is exposed. He's given us the plan. Whether we believe in it or not is the other story. Whether we're going to accept it or not. And so, God has given us the scripture and he has shown us the truth of it. And he's showing, yes, He's shown us by the communities of the past. But we cannot see the future. So there is doubt. Our community, our societies today, our, the countries today, they don't believe it. You can see by their actions and what they promote what they allow in the society. They don't believe it. We believe it. So God shows us, he says, don't say that these are tales of the past. They're not tales of the past. They're not made up stories. And I will show you my scheme. I will show you my plan. Let's look at some of his, some of the things that God has done when he says that my scheming is for middle. And we know what that means. I wrote it down, you know. It says something that is, you can't overcome it. It's just too great. It's for middle. It's just too great. He said, that's where my scheming is. He first talks about, well, let me read what God says. I'm not going to be too long. He says, 
in Ayat, in Surah the Pen, Al Qualim. He says, Therefore, let me deal with those who reject this hadith. We will lead them on whence they never proceed. I will give them enough rope. My scheming is formidable. Are you asking them for money? Say, they are burdened by their fine. Do they know the future? Do they have a record? You shall steadfastly persevere in carrying out the commands of your Lord. Do not be like Jonah who called from inside the fish. If it were not for his Lord's grace, he would have been ejected into the desert as a sinner. So God is telling me that, you know, my scheming is formidable. He said, I will lead them on. I will give them enough rope. He cites for us many, many, many examples in the Quran. You can look at a few. In the course of war, at the time of Muhammad, God says, recall that you were on the side of the valley while they were on the other side. Then their caravan had to move to a lower ground. Had you planned this way, you could not have done it. But God was to carry out a predetermined matter whereby those destined to be annihilated were annihilated for the obvious reason. And those destined to be saved were saved for an obvious reason. God is here on this. Wow. You're fighting a formidable foe. The disbelievers are. And Satan. And Satan knows that. It's we who don't know the human being. That's why we got to be so thankful that God gives us understanding. One of the uh, schemes of God that it, it, it floors me is Moses' mother. I mean, as a parent, you know, you read that and it's like, really? Could you do that? It says, in the history, it says, we despise Moses' mother, nurse him, and when you fear for his life, throw him into the river without fear or grief. We will return him to you and will make him one of the messengers. Can you imagine? Pharaoh's family picked him up only to have him lead the opposition to be a source of grief for them. That is because Pharaoh, Haman, and their troops were transgressors. Pharaoh's wife said, this can be a joyous find for me and you. Do not kill him, for he may be of some benefit for us, or we may adopt him to be our son. They had no idea. The mind of Moses' mother was growing so anxious that she almost gave away his identity. But we strengthened her heart to make her a believer. She said to her sister, traces to his sister, trace his path. She watched him from afar while they did not proceed. We forbid him from accepting all the nursing mothers, then said, I can show you a family that can raise him for you and take good care of him. Thus we restore him to his mother in order to please her, remove her worries, and to let her know that God's promise is the truth. However, most of them do not know. Now she could have gave up. But God strengthened her. And God had a plan for her and her children. Our children can damn sure be a test for us. But we got to hold fast. You go 
but we don't know the end result of God's scheme. We don't know the end result of God's plan. We just got to hold fast. Everything is a test. Everything. These are some of the schemes of God. You read it, it makes the hair stand on the back of your neck. He says, when Moses grew up, he said, then we afflicted Pharaoh's people with drought and shortage of crops that they may take heed. God's scheme. Give them adversity, difficulty. Trying to get them to come around. When good omens came to their way, they said, we have deserved this. But when hardship afflicted them, they blamed Moses and those with him. In fact, their omens are decided only by God, but most of them do not know. That should be a lesson for us. That should be a lesson for us. They said, no matter what kind of sign you show us to dupe us with your magic, we will not believe. Consequently, we set upon them the flood, the locusts, the lice, the frogs, the blood, profound signs. But they maintained their arrogance. They were evil people. Whenever a plague affected them, they said, Oh Moses, implore your Lord. You are close to him. If you relieve this plague, we will believe with you, and we will send the children of Israel with you. Yet, when he relieved the plague for any length of time, they violated the pledge. Consequently, we avenged their actions and drowned them in the sea. This is because they rejected our signs and were totally keeping us there up. A hundred in law letters. wanted to try to bring another perspective because this really as for you to say it's all said and done it's, it's finished he created the heavens and the earth for a specific purpose that purpose is to defeat falsehood we have to be on the side of truth. We have to utter the truth. And God says what, uh, what he abhors is those who say what they, what they don't, they say what they do, what they don't do. He says he doesn't, he abhors this. So we can't do that. We have to do what we say we're going to do. That we are going to be the servants of God in defeating falsehood. I'd like to read from Surah 14. In closing, it says,
Do they not realize that God has created the heavens and the earth for a specific purpose? If he wills, he can remove you and substitute a new creation in your place. This is not difficult for God. When they all stand before God, the followers will say to their leaders, we used to follow you. Can you spare us even a little bit of God's retribution? They will say, God has guided us. <coughs> we could have guided you. Now it is too late. Whether we grieve or resort to patience, there is no exit for us. And the devil will say after the judgment has been issued, God has promised you the truthful promise. And I promised you, but I broke my promise. I had no power over you. I simply invited you, and you accepted my invitation. Therefore, do not blame me, and blame only yourself. My complaining cannot help you, nor can your complaining help me. I have disbelieved in your idolizing me. The transgressors have incurred a painful retribution. I mean, he's a real scoundrel. <laughs> he's sweet. <Yeah>. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. So let us hold fast. Let us continue to understand what God has given us. In close, Revelation says. Who is the one who created the heavens and the earth? Who is the one who sends down to you from the sky water whereby we produce gardens full of beauty? You cannot possibly manufacture its trees. Is it another god with God? Indeed, there are people who have deviated. Now God has adorned the earth in our eyes as a test. These are wonderful, wonderful potents of God. But make no mistake, we are not to remain here. This is not the purpose why we're here. These are provisions for us while we are here. Who is the one who made the earth habitable, caused rivers to run through it? placed on it mountains and created a barrier between the two waters. Is it another God with God? Indeed, most of them do not know. Who is the one who rescues those who because become desperate and call upon him, will leave adversity and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is it another God with God? Rarely do you take heed. Who is the one who guides you in the darkness of the land and sea? Who is the one who sends the wind for good news, signaling his mercy? Is it another God with God? Most exalted is God above having any partners. Who is the one who initiates the creation and repeats it? Who is the one who provides for you from the heavens and the earth? Is it another God with God? Say, show me your proof if you are true. Say, no one in the heavens and the earth knows the future except God. They do not even perceive how or when they will be resurrected. Mm -hmm.